All right, let's move on to question number 126. And the correct answer is developed stakeholder register. So what should have been done to avoid this? Basically, what is happening after checking the resource management plan, the committee mentions that the stakeholders are not aware of their involvement. This could happen not because of your communication plan, not because of resource management plan, and has nothing to do with project resilience. This is something to do with uh, your risk management. Certain stakeholders, they are not aware that certain things are happening in a project. That means they've either not been identified or they've not been prioritized properly. Basically, they don't show up on the risk register or even if they show up, they are kind of, uh, you know, not a high priority. So you need to develop or, you know, kind of uh, redo your stakeholder register. And that alone will take care of the problem that we are facing as of now. All right, let's move on to question number 127. And the correct answer is the control risk. Monitor risk or control risk is the process where you actually become smarter. You figure out those uh, risks which you did not identify and then they occurred. So you have to make sure that you update your risk uh, register or you uh, reprioritize it. And also you come to know about those risks which are no longer relevant uh, as the project progresses. And so you eliminate them or not eliminate them. You actually put them as uh, in effect, right? They, 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 uh, they have passed their due. So that's all, all of that, uh, the reassessment uh, of the risks is done in the process called control risk. That's when you come back to it, right? All right. So this is the first time, uh, uh, you know, prioritization. This is quantification, basically further uh, technical and mathematical analysis all over and above qualitative risk analysis, only done for hard priority risk. And uh, perform risk assessment, basically, this is a tool and technique, which is part of uh, control risk, right? Uh, it's called reassessment, but that's okay. It's not been written very well over here. But anyway, uh, if you look at it, it's not a separate process. So the right answer is control risk. By the way, did you know that there is a book which is completely colored and it's only about the notes for PMP exams? All the notes, tips and tricks that would probably need for acing PMP exam. And that's available in a book called Ninja Notes. Have a look. It's all colored from inside. All right. Where do you find this? Ninja Notes for PMP 2021? Well, let's go to Amazon.com. Pass Notes. Right? That's it. Read and Pass Notes. That's my publication. And you have a few other books. And this is the book that I'm talking about. Now, this is available in two different versions. One is Kindle, which is for $9. And the paperback, which is completely colored from inside, is $38 paperback is now available only for US and a few other European and Japanese clients. In India, we have only the Kindle version. If you're from India, you'll just have to go to Amazon.in and over here, you will have to type the same thing. Read and pass notes and voila, you'll get the same. So you have for $449. All right, let's move on to question number 128.
And the correct answer is C. While calculating the duration of uh, schedule activities, differences in the capabilities of staff assigned should be taken into consideration. Hence, a senior staff member will generally be expected to finish an activity in less time than a junior member. Now, uh, this is good, but I'm pretty sure that you would have confused this with B. See, between B and C, there's not much difference, except that they're actually given a fixed percentage which is not going to be a, a good idea because even within those people who are actually good at their job or people who have done this kind of work before senior senior staff as you call it experienced staff they would not have a fixed percentage yes they would definitely have a better productivity and we can have a more aggressive schedule for them but we cannot put a fixed percentage to it it's not mathematics we are dealing with people with different uh, uh, abilities so this sounds plausible this looks plausible and people get tied in by yeah 80 percent right it, it looks process oriented well that's where you're wrong we are dealing with people so this c is a much better answer compared to b all right. Yes, we have to make allowances uh, for the schedule uh, based on the capabilities of people. Otherwise, why do we even hire better people? Right. So, for example, when you say A, while calculating the duration of the schedule activities, differences in the capabilities of staff should not be taken into consideration. Right. Then why do we hire uh, uh, smarter people or, or do we say uh, uh, more capable people? Right. Why do we look for more experienced resources? That's the reason. So A and D uh, does not even make uh, any uh, what I call logic. But B sounds plausible. But the moment you put a specific percentage to it, well, it loses its meaning. And therefore, the correct answer is C. All right, let's move on to question number 129. And the correct answer is submit a change request. See, the change request can come because of any reason. It does not always have to come from the customer. It can come from forgetting something. So your team itself can actually put the change request, right? So the point is, the moment you come to know about any discrepancy, and now that you the time has passed and a lot of things have happened, so the first thing you need to do, hey, we need to submit a change request. Why? We missed out something. Right. And then it goes to CCB. And then, of course, they will look at it, figure out uh, do we have to do it right now? Do we, you know, like basically they'll take a decision and then whatever decision that they take, you have to do it. Now, if you just update the OPAs of your organization, how is it going to really affect? Of course, you'll have to do some work around if the CCB says, hey, you need to do it right now, right? So uh, <laughs> it depends on what uh, they say, right? And then because we don't even know whether something, okay, look at the question here. Your project team has forgotten to take into account a critical design input from a design department while developing the scope statement. Now then somebody has to figure out uh, how much of an impact has it done, right? Do, is there a second phase to this project where we can do this or is it part of this particular release itself? So basically a lot of decisions have to be taken and it's best to make a change request and submit it to the CCB. So instead of taking a knee-jerk reaction, hey, do it right now. Right. Let's figure out, find out how do we do it. Let's stop all work. Let's get this thing done. Well, that's, you know, jumping the gun. Not a very good idea. Right. And then a ask your sponsor for the best course of action. Well, sponsor is not the only person uh, connected to CCB. There are other stakeholders as well. So, yes, this is a good answer. But a better answer would be to submit a change request to the ad uh, to, uh, you know, to see to address the issue and, you know, submit it to CCB. All right. Let's move on to question number 130. All right. And the correct answer for the same is one week. The calculation is quite simple because if you see uh, the standard deviation in PMP, we use the beta distribution method for uh, uh, what I call standard deviation, which is simple. Pessimistic minus optimistic. What is the longest duration here? It is 10 weeks, which is pessimistic. 
which is the shortest duration, which is 4, which is optimistic. So 10 minus 4 gives you 6. But this whole thing has to be divided by 6. P minus O divided by 6, that's the formula. And therefore, 10 minus 4, which is 6, divided by 6 gives you 1. There you go.